In this video, we are going to discuss sedimentation aided with coagulation or simply we can say clarification. So, previous videos we have seen what is plain sedimentation and many of time what happens in plain sedimentation is that very fine particles may not settle in time. It may take longer duration see like if silt particles it will may take sometimes around 10 hours and even sometimes uh, very minute particles like uh, below 0.02 mm particles will take even more than one day it will take approximately four days so if such is the case the treatment plan will not work efficiently it will take longer duration to meet the water demands so to meet water demand in time we have to see some other alternative other than plain sedimentation. So to improve the efficiency of sedimentation, coagulation is necessary. So once coagulants is added to the tank, it improves the coagulation. It first develops the flocculant, flocculates and then increase the efficiency of settlement of these particles. It will aid to settle the fine suspended particles in a much faster rate. So, this is why coagulants are added to water. So, there is basically we will say that sedimentation with coagulation have a three defined stages. The first stage is adding of chemical or these chemicals are known as coagulants. That means the chemicals which aid to remove the impurities by trapping it along with itself is known as Coagulant. So, once the coagulant is added, the next stage is mixing of it vigorously, mixing the particle coagulant with water vigorously so that an insoluble gelatinous flocculant is generated. Okay, this insoluble gelatinous flocculant has the property that it will trap impurities along with it. Okay, so the flocculant flocculation will start. Then what happens is, the said, uh, then the third stage of process will happen. Once this flock is formed, it will trap the impurities and it will enlarge its size. So the enlargement improves weight. So eventually what happens, it descends through the water and settles downward. So this flock along with impurities, it will settle down over here. So, this will happen in a much faster rate compared to plain sedimentation. In addition to this, this will remove color, odor and taste etc. So, there are much of other benefits also. It will remove the very finely divided mineral matters, uh, planktons, animal and vegetative matters, organic coloring matters and even some, to some level of bacteria and virus. So, first we have to add the coagulant, then mix it with water. Then the, it will start precipitate and then it will uh, set, settle down at the sedimentation basin along with the colloidal particles. Okay, so these are the three stages. So for the mixing of the chemicals, we use different aids to help the improvement in mixing. So high turbulence has to create it so that the chemical is mixed thoroughly with the water. To create that high turbulence in water, the water may be passed through wires like over here. So, once it is passed over the way, the water will be turbulated. So, the laminar flow will be disturbed and the turbulence will mix the chemical along with the water efficiently. Then, or else we can use orifice, orifice plates like this. Orifice plate also will improve the turbulence. And then, general case, most of the case in water plant, what we see is mixing using some mechanical aid like flash mixer. So, this fan blades will mix the chemicals in water. Thoroughly. After mixing, the first stage of precipitation is known as coagulation. After that, it will enlarge, the flock will try to enlarge its size. So, that is known as flocculation. And finally, eventually, these flocculants will start to settle. The third stage is known as this sedimentation. So, the common coagulants that we use in our uh, treatment plant is alum. So, what are the factors which help, uh, which affect the uh, coagulants? First one is the type of coagulants so for example alum or sometimes chlorinated chlorpress so which coagulant has to be used at what condition 
so these types also affects the efficiency of the coagulation or the quantity how much alum has to be used or what is the dosage of it whether you have to uh, go for a, a higher dose or unnecessarily why should we go for that higher dose so these are all determined by the laboratory test for example jar test then based on the characters of water like type of water what type of matter it, uh, water it is is it clear water turbid matter turbid water so first we have to find out the what is the quantity of suspended matter in water then we have to identify what type of uh, coagulant and what dosage we have to give then temperature of a water also affects the coagulation then ph of water some coagulants works in uh, acidic rain some work in normal rain some work in alkaline rain so these also affect the coagulation then time and method of mixing even if the mixing is not proper and the coagulation will not be effective so even the time and method also affects the coagulation then we shall see what are the different types of coagulants generally we use the first one is aluminium sulfate or simply we will call it as alum in addition to that we will see what is chlorinate copras ferrous sulfate along with lime magnesium carbonate polyelectrolytes and sodium aluminate so let us see what is alum Alum is Al2SO3, SO4 thrice 18H2. Okay, or we can call it as aluminium sulfate. It is available in market as solid grey colored blocks. Okay, which will contain only 17 percentage of aluminium sulfate. Mostly in our water treatment plant, we use these type of blocks, and this will work in the presence of alkalinity. Most of the case, bicarbonate alkalinity will be present at natural alkalinity. So, not necessary that we should uh, uh, keep up the alkalinity. The alkalinity will be there present in, in naturally. Or else, if that bicarbonate alkalinity is not there, we have to add lime so that the preferred alkalinity is maintained. So, a sufficient lime should be added. So, either the natural alkalinity or sufficient lime has to be added. So, if Natural alkalinity is present in water. What happens is this is the type of reaction what happens along with alum. So alum along with the natural alkalinity that is calcium bicarbonate, this reacts and form aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide is the fluke. Okay. Along with this calcium sulfate, carbon dioxide and water will be formed as back, uh, byproduct. See here calcium sulfate. This is a drawback of alum which creates hardness. Other than that, Alpha alum is okay to be used in water treatment plant. So the fluke is aluminum hydroxide. This fluke will entrap the impurities along with it and settle down at the sedimentation basin. Now if this bicarbonate alkalinity is not present, what we have to do? We have to add lime. Al uh, add lime means we have to add calcium oxide. For calcium oxide once immediately added to water, what happens is it convert get converts to it get converts to calcium hydroxide. This calcium hydroxide reacts with alum and form aluminium hydroxide. This is the fluke. Okay, along with it, calcium sulfate and water will be formed. So next is sometimes we will use soda ash that is sodium carbonate also. So in that case, we may not see this hardness. Calcium sulfate hardness will not be there as a byproduct. Again, here also the aluminium hydroxide is the fluke. This fluke will try to entrap the impurities and settle down at the bottom. So these are the three types of reactions uh, happens in generally in water when we use alum as the coagulant. So this will uh, generally work in the range of pH 6.5 to 8.5 and you again we have to find out what is the opt optimum dose of alum to be used using some jar test and if it is a clear water we may prefer up to 5 milligram per liter of dosage and if it is turbid water we will go up to 25 to 30 milligram per liter of alum just the average dose that is used is 90 milligram per liter next one is chlorinated copras chlorinated copras means hydrated ferrous sulfate feso 4 7h2 it is highly soluble compared to alum and it will generally work in usual ph range so what happens it is for get first oxidized to ferric sulfide and ferric chloride okay this chlorinate uh, this hydrated ferrous sulfate along with chlorine okay we have to add it along with 
chlorine that means generally we will not add directly this into water tank initially we will take a small amount of water in which chlorine is incorporated to that chlorine incorporated water we will add this fer hydrated ferrous sulfate so immediately when it is added to this chlorinated water this will immediately get oxidized to ferrous sulfate and fluoric chloride this ferrous sulfate and fluoric uh, Chloride, chloride are combinedly called as chlorinated copras okay and this will react with water and forms the ferric hydroxide flow so here the flow is ferric hydroxide so this ferric hydroxide flow will entrap the colloidal impurities and start to settle down so this is how the chlorinated copras will react in water so the hydrated ferrous sulfate immediately gets converted to ferric chloride and fluoric sulfate which will then get converted to ferric hydroxide. The ferric hydroxide is the flow developed in chlorinated copras. So this is also very much effective in removing color especially manganese and theoretical ratio of chlorine to copras means how much chlorine we have to use when we are going to input. Uh, copras to water that is 1 is to 7.8 is the ratio then when ferric chloride is used independently the effective range of pH is 3.5 to 6.5 and whenever the pH increases the, it is very much efficient in removing manganese and ferric sulfate it can be efficient in 4 to 7 pH and above 9 pH so whenever we are going to use ferric sulfate independently we have to use special solution arrangements for this as this is not insoluble directly in cold water so special arrangements has to be used for ferric sulfate and then we have to use it to water next one is ferrous sulfate and lime so ferrous sulfate ordinarily we will call generally it as copras okay this is a granular acid compound and it is usually fed in the solution form of four to eight percentage so this is very low in reaction okay so what happens to improve its efficiency in reaction we will add always lime along with it whenever we are going to use ferrous sulfate so ferrous sulfate if it reacts with water and calcium hydroxide lime will get converted to calcium hydroxide and it will give ferric hydroxide as the flow and this ferric hydroxide will entrap the impurities and try to make it settle down the bottom this even though this flock generally it has a, a property of feathery and fragile nature but even though that it is having high specific gravity this high specific gravity in nature makes it settle down at the bottom then this is the reaction what is happening to ferrous sulfate and this is uh, this will work well in ph range 8.5 and above so for this purpose uh, for its efficiency to be high it has to be always alkaline for that purpose we are adding lime to the solution then next one is carbonate magnesium carbonate and lime so here also this will dissolve in water and form magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate and thus this magnesium hydroxide is the flow and this will remove the impurities from water but here the flow will uh, form in the form of a sludge which is in slurry form since it is slurry form much of the water will be waste, wasted over there so much of time we will may not prefer magnesium carbonate and lime because the flow is a slurry form it is a slurry in nature so if it is in uh, deposition nature without much water incorporated it may prefer it but since it is in slurry form we may not prefer it much as compared to chlorinated copras or other it also removes color iron and manganese and the next one is poly electrolytes which is higher a uh, high molecular weight water soluble polymers generally in market we can see flocculine and magnifloc these are also used sometimes to a dosage of 1 ppm and the last one is sodium aluminate the sodium aluminate is Al2O3 Na2O3 Na2CO3 and NaOH the best drug contains all these so this is the reaction what we can get over this so here CaL2O3 is the flow which will combine with impurities and settle down so these are the general common coagulants that we see in our water treatment plants and very much and most commonly we use aluminium sulfate that is alum.